Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do another current favourites. Now it has been a while since I've done a current favourites because I have been loving a lot of things lately so I thought I would share them with you guys. I have a mix of like clothing, beauty, books, TV shows, all that good stuff to chat to you guys about. So yeah without further ado let's jump into this video. Alright so I might start off with clothing. So to start off with I wanted to talk about a pair of jeans. So I have been obsessed with these jeans lately. Lately. These are the carpenter jeans from Kmart and I know that like carpenter jeans have been such a massive thing lately and I really wanted to jump on the bandwagon so when Kmart brought these out I fell in love with them. They fit me perfectly but they're just this really nice kind of like mid wash of denim. They're like quite a long baggy leg jean. They have the little like carpenter, what do you call this thing? Little loop. They have like these kind of pockets and things on the side of the pant. So I honestly love these. I have been reaching for these so much. They're like the perfect wash of denim. I would love if they brought them out in like a pink. That would be really really pretty. Next up I have been absolutely loving this little roll neck jumper here. Now this is currently inside out because I have actually just taken this off of the line where it has been drying but I actually found this chunky cable knit jumper in the op shop it is 30% wool as well so it is so so warm and I have been layering this over like dresses or I um, recently got um, a denim maxi skirt and so I've been tucking it into that but it just keeps me so warm I love the cable knit I love the color just this really nice cream kind of beigey color and I like that it's a roll neck and not a turtleneck because I have a really small neck and so turtlenecks just don't work for me a lot of the time. Sleeves are at a good length and they kind of like taper in at the end. I do always roll the end of the sleeves as well. And then the last like clothing pieces that I have been absolutely loving lately have been knit dresses. So I recently picked up this one from Kmart. You guys will see this in like a spring clothing haul. You're ribs material it has short sleeves it has this cute little like almost like a little sweetheart neckline because it's not quite like square but it's not quite round and then it has the splits on the side they recently brought this out in black as well which I'm very tempted to go back to Kmart and get and I have bought so many other like long sleeve knits for winter as well I believe I did do a winter clothing haul but I have been loving Kmart's dresses lately just absolutely nailed it and they fit so well as well so that's like one style that I've bought quite a few in but I want to get more colors of that gray one with the short sleeves because it's new and it's part of the like spring summer collection and then they also brought out these really, I'm going to go very overexposed because it's black, thick dresses. They've got quite a high cut on the neck. They're kind of like a bell sleeve and then they taper in on the end. And like you guys can see like that is so fluffy. And I've got this in black and I've also got it in like a beige as well. These again also have like the slit on the side. I have been loving these. Like this one and the beige one are so warm. Like literally I just layer with a singlet underneath and a pair of tights. And it keeps me warm for the entire day. And it's been like quite icy up here in Auckland recently in winter. So these dresses have been such a lifesaver. I actually ordered mine online from Kmart because they were selling out really fast of like my size in this one and the beige one as well. And they're kind of more of like a midi maxi kind of style in terms of the length. Next up I have some shoes to talk to you guys about. So I want to start off with these cute little ankle boots here. I have been wearing these to absolute death. I freaking love these. Um, I'll just show you guys one of them. So they are these boots here. They are a black leather boot. They have a little bit of suede up the top and they have this little dome here. They have this little bit here. They have a zip running down. They've got a block heel so they're really really comfortable. But these ones I I think I mentioned I got from Mi Piace, so they're like good quality boots. 
I also got some little grips to go on the bottom, which I've actually been wearing through because I've been wearing them that much. But I love these. Like, these are literally my, like, go-to boot. Um, they've got a pointy toe, and they just work so well, whether I'm wearing, like, jeans, skirts, dresses. It just works, and they're so comfortable for all-day wear. So I've been absolutely loving these. And then the other pair of boots that I have been loving, again, are from Mi Piace. And they are just these really nice flat Chelsea boots. So again, I'll show you guys one of them. These ones are part of their European leather range. They are so incredibly soft. Like, I cannot explain how soft these are. Like, I can do a full day at work in these and my feet are fine. They have the tiniest little bit of a heel. They have this little thing. And these are just such nice boots and so comfortable. And again, they go with absolutely anything. And coming into winter, I needed a flat pair of Chelsea boots because all of the boots that I have have got a heel. This is like the smallest heel I think that I've got. So I wanted something that was just like completely flat. And so they brought these out and I knew that I absolutely had to have them. And they're just such nice boots. Honestly, so comfortable. And then the last pair of shoes are actually shoes that I am currently wearing. But they are just these slippers here. Now I am obsessed with these slippers here. These I actually just bought from Kmart surprisingly enough. I know that they have done them where they don't have the back. So I saw these in there one day and I was like, I'm just gonna grab these because these literally look like Uggs, but are like a fraction of the price. These ones I got on a size 7, which is my standard size. They have memory foam on the inside with the foam insock, and literally that makes such a difference. Like these are so warm and I can already feel my feet getting cold now that I've taken them off. And I like that they have this like white fur out around the outside it's so warm and then the little like the brown bit like they just go with like everything at home so i have been like wearing these so much like look how cute they look with like jeans so like if you're in need of some slippers definitely check out kmart because these just hit so different like they're so nice alrighty so next up we might do some tv shows so i have two tv shows that i wanted to talk to you guys about the first tv show i feel like is going to come as no surprise but that is the summer i turned pretty season two so season two dropped like a couple of weeks ago i think and phil and i just sat and binge watched it all last weekend and it was really good and i feel like with the summer i turned pretty they have cast it really well and they've kept to the book looks really well and they've also added parts in that have actually enhanced the watching experience because the books are like very short and very quick to read so like they kind of just focus on one main idea whereas if you had that for a tv show it would be quite boring but it's one of the ones i think that they've done so well and it was really nice to like i guess be in the characters world again and like kind of catch up with them and see where they're at but i honestly thoroughly enjoyed it i thought it was filmed really well by the way if you've not heard of the summer i turned pretty i feel like most people have. It is based on a book series um, which I read when I was in high school and then I reread them at the beginning of this year in summer. Basically it follows Belly who she has grown up with these um, two boys at a summer house every year because her mum's best friend is the one that owns the summer house and has these two boys and obviously like with their mums being best friends they've always hung out and are always very close so every summer they spend their summers at this summer house together and it kind of just tells the story of like the summer that Belly kind of had her glow up like kind of the boys started like noticing her a little bit more and she wasn't just seen as like a little kid anymore and it just tells the story of her like falling for these boys as well and the adventures that they get up to and it's just really enjoyable to watch so I loved season two and I believe they are gonna do season three I'm gonna be sad when it's ended but they've done it really well and I'm really happy they did it as a tv show and not a movie and there's only I think eight episodes per season so it's such a quick watch you can watch them on Amazon Prime and then the other TV show that I wanted to talk to you guys about is Shadow and Bone. Now Shadow and Bone is a new release on Netflix. It is based on the book series by Lee Bardugo. Now I have not read the book series. I want to. It's on my list to get so I can't vouch how it is in comparison to the books but basically the book trilogy got really 
really popular on booktok and so they've now made it into a tv a tv show what happens is you have like the mortal people and you have the grisha people they both live in like the same town not quite the right word but they live in like the same land and the grisha people they have powers and stuff that they can use two lands basically that has mortals and grisha i'm pretty sure and there's something in the middle called the fold now the fold is it kind of is just the easiest way to describe it is like storm clouds like it's just a very very long storm cloud that just stretches out for miles and miles and miles to get resources across to each other they have to cross the fold in the fold live like monsters and stuff that always try and kill you when you're crossing the fold so it kind of just follows the story of a young girl who basically ends up on this mission to go across the fold and then something happens and the story kind of goes from there but i don't want to say what happens in case it's a spoiler and basically people don't like grisha either because they kind of see them as like witches and witchcraft and they try and eliminate it and season one came out on netflix and i think season two as well actually but phil and i have just watched the first season and it is really good like i think thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought I was going to get a bit lost because I haven't read the books but it was actually pretty easy to follow but we haven't watched season two yet so I'm really excited to watch season two. I think it's like fantasy and then you also have um, a second plot line alongside which follows Kaz and Kaz has like a little group of misfits who are like trying to pull off this heist basically which I think is based on the Six of Crows duology so again it's set in the same world written by Lee Bardugo but just focuses on Kaz and his group of people I believe and Shadow and Bone focuses on the girl and like that kind of storyline so I feel like they've kind of merged it together but it works it works really well they like interconnect as well so it's really good like I'm really enjoying it so far by the way if you guys want to check out the um, TV shows at all I will leave the trailers down below next up I'm going to do a beauty slash makeup product and that is my new exo beauty brushes so I have been needing some new makeup brushes for the longest time um, in terms of like face brushes I have some eye brushes from Real Techniques that I really like, but I really needed an upgrade on my face brushes. And so over the past couple of months, I've slowly been <laughs> buying some. I do want to get some more, but as of right now, this is what I've got. Um, Exo Beauty, by the way, is Shannon Harris's brand. So Shannon is a New Zealand YouTuber who is like quite well known here. Um, and she owns the Exo Beauty company, which do like brushes, makeup, beauty products, like all that kind of thing. So farmers um, up here in Auckland at Sylvia Park, they stock Exo Beauty and they stock the brushes. So I've been enjoying getting some. They are really, really soft. I'm pretty sure they're vegan brushes as well. So I have the powder brush and all of these are made in Italy as well. I have the bronzer brush and I have the round face brush. So this is what they look like. So I use the round face brush for blush, which you can probably see on the end. Um, it's quite dense, so it's good to be able to like really like press it into your skin. Then obviously I use the bronzer brush for like bronzing and contouring and then obviously use the powder brush to apply my powder and kind of blend all of my other products together. This is how my makeup looks. So I feel like it's turned out pretty good today. I've honestly been really enjoying doing my makeup with some good quality brushes. I really like the packaging as well, how it's like kind of like silver and then black on the end I think it just looks really elegant. Next up I'm going to do a food item. So I have been loving katsubi. Katsubi is kind of like a takeaway thing up here in Auckland. It's kind of like a pitta bowl almost but it's really really nice. So you pick like your salads, you pick your meat and then you like pick your sauce as well and they have like different sizes different things that you can get so like you can get a small bowl where you just have either salad or rice and have one meat and then you can get like a medium bowl where you can pick where you can have salad and rice and pick one meat and then I'm pretty sure you can get another bowl where you like have salad rice and you can pick two meats and it kind of just goes up from there but it's pretty reasonably priced um, and they're just in the malls and my go-to is getting rice with lettuce, cabbage, pineapple, and potentially tomato. Can't remember if they do tomato or not. And then I get garlic aioli and then get teriyaki chicken. And it's so, 
so good. Like, Phil and I are obsessed with it. And when my family were up here, I took them to Katsubi as well. My youngest sister, Anya, really liked it. And she's quite picky with food. So, such a good go-to. And, like, it always fills us up as well. Like, it gives us lunch and dinner, pretty much. Because the portion sizes are just really good. And it's very affordable as well. Next up, I'm going to do books. And I have quite a few books to share with you guys. So, I have been reading a lot lately which has been really really nice and i feel like a lot of these books i have talked about multiple times on my channel so i apologize if i sound like a broken record i've got to mention them in my favorites because i've been loving them i'm gonna start off with the inheritance games trilogy so as of right now i have only read the first and second book um i do have the third book which is called the final gambit and these are written by jennifer lynn barnes if you've not heard of this series, I feel like you probably have because it's on Book Talk and it's really popular at the moment. But in case you haven't, we are following Avery who she grows up quite poor with money and then she's left on her own and she is still in high school she works a part-time job and she is like really poor sleeping in her car eating the meals that work give her because she works in hospitality and so she's like really struggling and she has like big dreams to like travel the world and like get a better paying job and get a good education and that kind of thing and then all of a sudden out of nowhere she inherits billions of dollars from this old rich guy who she's never met and this old rich guy had a family who were expecting to receive this money in order to receive this money that she has been left she has to live in this old guy's mansion with all of his family for a year and so the family are obviously not impressed. The house is very like, it's very big obviously. It gives like Nancy Drew vibes because there's like all these secret passageways like hidden in the house. So Avery's trying to figure out with these four brothers why she has basically inherited their money in a sense. I love all four of the boys. They're all so enjoyable to read about. There is a bit of a love triangle in here as well, but it's just written very well. It's very fast paced, very short chapters, and you get more insight in the second book as to like things that are going on. But still in the first book, like you find out some things as well which is really helpful so they don't just leave everything to get solved in the other books i love the covers i think they're done so well so i literally just finished this like a few days ago and yeah really loved it i love the spines as well they're just very pretty all right i apologize if i'm in a slightly different position my battery just died so i have just changed it over to my other one so the next two books that i want to talk about again are a duology and that is the It Ends With Us duology by Miss Colleen Hoover. So I absolutely loved both of these books. I thought they were written very well. Obviously they are very very popular with book talk as of right now but in It Ends With Us you are following Lily. Lily grew up in quite a tough home. There are a lot of like trigger warnings for this book so definitely check them before you read them and it kind of like has the then and now timeline so and it tells her story of her befriending one of the guys at her school who's kind of a bit of an outcast and tells a little bit about their friendship and shows her dealing with the stuff that's going on at home and then the now timeline is her living in Boston she runs a business is in like a relationship with this other guy and then the guy that she grew up with comes back into her life and it kind of just makes her reflect on like everything that's kind of happened it was written very well again quite short chapters I just really really enjoyed hanging out with Lily like she was a really yeah she was just really nice to like get in her head and see where she's at and I feel like if she was a real person we would be like really close friends. I know this is getting made into I think it's a tv show or a movie which I'm really excited for it to come out I can't wait for it. Following that you also have It Starts With Us which is basically the closure novel. There's a few trigger warnings for this one but nowhere near as many as It Ends With Us and Colleen Hoover wrote it starts with us because fans who read this wanted a closure novel because, just because of how this ended. So this one you get the guy that she grew up with's point of view which is Atlas and you get to read from like his head and I'm pretty sure you get Lily's as well so you get like a dual point of view. I loved this. I flew through this. There's not as much plot and it starts with us as it ends with us. Yeah definitely make sure you read it ends with us first and then it starts with us last otherwise you will 100% ruin it for yourself. And then the last book that I have to talk to you guys about again is one that is like 
overly hyped on the internet but I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and that is Akatar by Sarah J Maas or Sarah J Mass, depending on how you pronounce it Court of Thorns and Roses this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The only thing I didn't expect with it is that about two thirds of the way through there is a lot of violence and doesn't really end until the very end of the book. So it's a little bit gory, a little bit grotesque. As long as you know that I think you'll be fine. I didn't really know about it and so it kind of came out of left field for me and I was like whoa like this is a lot and I don't really deal with like a lot of gore and stuff. So this was probably about the max that I could take. But basically in this book you are following Feyre. Feyre lives in the Mortal Lands, so there's Mortal Lands and Fairy Land. Fairy Land and the Mortal Land, like the mortal people, they don't really cross over. They are pronounced fairies, I think, but I always call them fairy because I can't associate the word fairy, like little delicate little thing with the wings. Yeah, I can't associate that thing with how they're described in here. So I call them fairies just for peace of my own mind. And one day, um, Feyre, because Feyre is like a hunter who provides for her family, because her family were really wealthy, lost all their money, so they had to move out into the forest, and so she's the one that like brings in the food. And one day a fairy crosses into their land, she sees it out in the woods, she shoots it and then the fairy king finds out and then he comes to take Feyre back to the fairy land and as punishment she has to live in the fairy land her whole life. She is the only mortal in a land full of like magical creatures. So it's very interesting to read about. I do wish at the start of this book that you had a list of all of the like magical creatures and what their powers were because I did get a little bit lost and I think part of that was because I read a lot on my lunch breaks and on the bus home and so I'm constantly like picking the book up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down and with Akatar it's really hard to keep track of if you're doing it that way. But I really enjoyed the way this was written. Sarah J Maas is a really good author and like the way that she describes things is just like next level so I really enjoyed that. This is a five book series where the first four books I think you follow Feyre, the fourth book is like a little novella so it's like not as bad and then the fifth book you follow another character I think who must be connected to Feyre. I've only read the first book as of right now, I have got the second book so I am excited to kind of get stuck back into this world but I did really appreciate the map at the start of the book. It is pretty easy in terms of fantasy to read because it's a fantasy book, I don't know if I said. And then the last category that I have to share with you guys is just something random. I have been watching a lot of booktube lately on YouTube. Um, I've been loving all the book content that people have been making. It's definitely given me some good recommendations to try. And because of that, I have a new YouTuber that I really, really like. And that is Destiny Sidwell. So Destiny Sidwell, again, makes book content. So I've really been enjoying like watching her book videos. She also does like vlogs now and then. So there we go, guys. I think that is literally everything that I wanted to cover in this current favourites. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing the things that I have been loving as of right now. I will try and link down below what I can find and I'll obviously link the trailers to the TV shows that I mentioned down below. I haven't really been watching a lot of movies lately. It's mostly been TV shows because like I just don't have enough time. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Please make sure to turn on the notifications and check out my social media. It's always linked down below in the description box. I have a whole playlist of current favourites on my channel. If you guys want to go back and watch some, I will leave that playlist down below and in the iCard as well if my cards are working. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Probably do another one of these in the summertime as well. But yeah, I shall see you guys in my next video. Bye!